Okay, so now I'll go ahead and close the check nudge. Let's go back up to train data set. Um, and I want to check whether or not to nudge. So I don't want to check every single time through this because that's going to be a lot of computation. And I don't want to nudge it every single time if I'm not making any progress. So I'm actually going to wait until I'm at a nice even multiple of the nudge window uh, before I even bother doing a check. Okay, so if <coughs> iterations mod nudge window equals zero, then I'll call check nudge, all right? So if the nudge window has length 500, um, I'm gonna wait and only check every 500 passes. Um, so I have entirely new sets of data to compare information off of, okay? And that will swap out. Um, so if I run it on, let's say the thousandth iteration, um, what is then the new average will become the old average of the following time I call check nudge. Um, and that will just be, that will just be very nice. So let's go back to, shoot, where do I want to go? Um, okay, let's go down to the check nudge method. Um, I'm actually going to add some stuff in here just for the sake of illustrating what's happening. Um, so let's add in here, right after I compute the old new average, I'm going to go console.write. <coughs> So I'll do iteration, so iter zero, uh, old average one, colon 0, 0. 0.000, uh, maybe four decimal places is good. New average will be the second one, 0. 0.0000, zero. Um, just like that. And it's going to be iterations old average, new average. All right. So <clears throat> every time I call check nudge, it's going to print out one of these lines. And uh, if I actually do nudge the thing, let's add a console dot right line, or sorry, just write space uh, nudge. Nudged. How about that? OK, so in the event that we actually nudge it, when we call this check nudge, um, it'll add nudged at the end. And then I'll just add a console.write uh, slash n. So we break it all into new lines. OK. <coughs> so the nudge window is set to every 100. Let's go ahead and set this to every 500, let's say. Nudge scale is 0.25. Nudge tolerance is 0 0.0001. Go back to our program and just hit F5 and see what happens. Okay, trained, nothing really interesting happened. Uh, what that means is if I go back and look at the data here, um, I never broke, well, I didn't even break 500. Okay, so um, it's probably going to take a few tries to find one that actually does this. For instance, so this is the data we just did, it, it went straight there. Um, so let's keep on keeping on and just see uh, what happens. Actually, you know what? I can pause this. Okay, so here's one. It took just a couple seconds. Um, this one, see there's our first pass, iteration 1000. Old average was 0 0.9819. The new average was 0 0.6734. So we didn't nudge it. Um, on iteration 500, our old average is, right, the old new average. And our new average is 0 0.6588. Um, and so the slope of the line that connects those two points was less than our tolerance, so we nudged it. Now you'll notice I nudged it uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times um, before all of a sudden, somewhere between 6,500 and 7,000, it did it, figured it out. So if I look at my training data here, we can see I'm stuck here at 6,500 for a while. <coughs> so the, here's iteration 999. There's iteration 1,000. Um, it's hard to see if the error is bumped up. Well, we can just plot it and see what happens. Okay, so let's switch over to Mathematica real quick and plot it. And here we go. So this is from the very beginning. Um, we started off, looks like, at around 1.5. Drop down to, we keep getting this 0 0.6 with the 221 XOR data. Um, <clears throat> this is probably like us missing one of the points consistently. And you can see 
So we didn't do it on iteration 1000. I already closed it, so you can't see it. But that's because the average between 0 and 500 was up here somewhere. And the average between 500 and 1000 was down here somewhere. So that line was sloped strongly enough that it didn't do it. Now out here, once I got to 1500, the difference between the average value on this interval from 500 to 1000 and 1000 to 1500 was not very much. Let me actually zoom in here. 0 to 1. <coughs> um, so then right here at 1500, we nudged it. And you can see the error spikes. Okay, So that's good. Um, that's actually what I want to happen. Um, I want to randomize the, the weights a little bit and move it to a different place on the error surface, likely increasing the error, which I did, hoping that I could then fall back out of it. Now, we don't know if this would have been one of the times, just like it did in the first video, where I would have been stuck here for a million iterations, you know, the whole time. Or maybe I would have figured it out around 7,000 anyway. Um, but we just, we don't know. So you can see here that it spikes. It spikes again at 5, or sorry, I guess that's 2,000, 2,500. Um, I don't know if it did it there at 3. I think it did. Uh, every single every single 500 iterations, it did it until here, right around 6,500, it spiked and then shot straight down to the solution. Okay, so let's um, <coughs> let's try it again. See if we can find another one. Okay, so this one did it three times before eventually getting to the solution. The data we only went up to 2,952. Okay, so almost 3,000. We were about to. Uh, check nudge again. So let's go back to Mathematica and plot this one, except I want to plot everything. <coughs> and there it is. Came down. Uh, we did not we did not do it at a thousand. We did do it at fifteen hundred. Okay, there's right there. We did it at two thousand. <coughs> that nudge may have not actually nudged it a great deal. Uh, we did it again at 2500. You can see we shot it up there. And after that, the algorithm was able to take it over, boom, and go straight down and solve it. Okay? So that's pretty cool. That's pretty good. Um, let's see if I can do it again and find another, another good example. This is going to be really <coughs> unexciting video here. Well, apparently this is just too good. It's weird because sometimes you just get stuck and it, it gets nudged a bunch. Oh, just like that. So this one went all the way up to at least 9,000. It actually went all the way up to 9,200 before getting there. So let's go back to Mathematica and import this one. <coughs> and here again, you see it. So uh, let's see, it comes down. That's 1,000. Here's 2,000. You can see the nudge. There's 3,000. You can see another one. 4,500, 5 grand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we nudge, 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 nudge. And then finally, looks like right around 9,000, we do a nudge that moves us into a place where the algorithm actually does succeed. And boom, takes over, takes us straight down. So this is a place where, I mean, shoot, we could have been stuck here the whole time. I could have ran all the way up to the max iterations and never found the solution. Uh, not because the network isn't robust enough to handle this data set, because it certainly is, uh, but just because we were stuck in a local minima. And so another thing to notice, I guess, while we're here, is that not every nudge moves us into a place where we're magically going to get it the next time. Okay, The nudge, all it does is change it randomly. Um, and we're hoping that if you do it frequently enough, um, you'll actually nudge it into a place that will help you find a local or the global uh, minimum, okay? So you can tell each time this is, it's different, the number of iterations, it's different, um, you know, how much it's being nudged each time. The error uh, increases more when we nudge it sometimes than others, right? Here it's low, here it's high, here it's high again. Um, so again, it is totally random process, but it's one more tool to help us kind of just jump out of local minima and hopefully, uh, uh, solve it, right? Solve the thing. Now, another thing that's nice is that it's not going to get called every time. Like that time, I didn't even get to do a check nudge, which means 
This one probably just solves straight away, and there it is. Okay, looks like less than 300 iterations. <clears throat> we already started in a place where either we had enough uh, momentum built up to skip through a local minima, or we just were in a place that could proceed directly to the global minimum, and so we did. Um, so obviously it isn't going to be in use every time, but hopefully um, it will happen, it will kick in when we want it to, and ooh, there's a good one. Wow, 64,500 times. So this one's going to be kind of a beast to look at. And there it is. So here's another perfect example, right? Start off right around one and a half. That's kind of typical from what we've seen. Comes down to right down to 0 0.6, 0 0.7 area. And look, we nudged this thing several times. Uh, you can see it. this is every 500 iterations. Um, and this is another good example, right? Sometimes the error gets changed a lot. Sometimes you can't even tell that we nudged it, although I'm sure we did. Um, but all it takes is that one that moves you into a place that will let your network, boom, get solved, okay? Um, and that's, I mean, that's important to realize. Let's see. Yeah, we nudged it every single time except for the first two. All right. So anyway, um, I've actually played with this <coughs> nudging for a while, and it seems like it's working really well. Um, I don't know necessarily uh, what the best numbers are here, right? If we go back to the network trainer um, for the nudge scale, the nudge tolerance, the nudge window, these are all things you can play with. Um, one of the reasons I did the division by the nudge window in the check nudge method right here, right? This computes the slope um, between these two average points as though they're the same distance apart. And by dividing by nudge window, it lets me use the same number here for nudge tolerance no matter what size the nudge window is, right? Because, well, it's a ratio as a portion of nudge window. If that's less than nudge tolerance, then do it. So let's just make the nudge window real small, like 10, oh, maybe, I don't know, 50, uh, and do it again just to see what happens. Oh, look at that. So we were making progress. This completed in less than 1,000 iterations. One time between, uh, I guess, 300 and 400, we hadn't really made any progress. And so it got nudged once. So let's go ahead and import this data, just for giggles. And there it is, OK? Um, right at 400. So we were making progress. And this is one of those things that's deceptive when you look at the graph, because this looks kind of level. But um, this is why we, that's why we have computers that do the do the number crunching for us, okay? And in fact, you can see in here that the averages are considerably different until right there, 0 0.8917 to 0 0.8888 over a distance of whatever we just did, 50, um, is not not enough. So we nudge it again, um, and nothing is really happening. Actually, it, it looks like nothing is happening, but it's actually making enough progress that we're not worried about it, and it finds the solution no problem. So anyway. That's a nudge method. That's one, uh, one way to make our training algorithm more robust. Um, something else you can do, and it depends on what you're trying to train your network for, but one of the things that you want to do sometimes is add noise to your training data. Uh, you want to kind of make it less perfect and a little bit dirty so that the network doesn't learn exactly your data points, but it learns generally uh, sort of what what you're trying to get at with the data. So um, I think that's probably where we're going to head next, look into adding noise, and um, and see see what we can do about that, OK? So I hope that was helpful. hope that was interesting. And um, hope you guys get it all written up, and it's working for you. All right, later.